I've spoken with the former head of the AMA, Dr Makesh Hakawal, a few times through this pandemic, haven't we? He's on the front line via his GP clinic in Melbourne's West, one of the first to establish a COVID testing facility. He joins me now via Skype. I've got to go to someone who knows what they're talking about. He's actually on the coalface here because we're getting a lot of misinformation, um, Dr Harkerwell. What do you think's driving this outbreak? And is it a failure in community information or testing regimes or something structural like that? Uh, Peter, thank you. Um, I, I think that there's a combination of reasons why we are in the situation. What's happened is that um, we've seen the uptick start here in Victoria. Um, and uh, I think that other states need to take note that they're not far away from this, I, I believe. Uh, it's inevitable when you've locked down and you've gone back into letting some things happen, like the schools going back. So while we've been testing, with the, the week that the schools went back, we suddenly saw a big uh, a sharp intake of kids coming through. Um, and of course, with the um, uh, messaging from week before Friday, Saturday before last, when the Premier announced the hotspots, uh, and the new initiatives with the military and the new initiatives with the uh, the testing and the showgrounds and other places, um, the, the the need has suddenly increased, uh, and uh, we would we'll see this in other places. So, I think you're totally right. The messaging is a problem. I think people are not taking this seriously. I think the words that there is no other solution, there is no other choice, we don't have another chance. You know, needs to be gotten home. I think we've been a, a victim of our own success. You know, I've um, chaired the World Medical Association, 110 na member nations. I see their bulletins every day. And Australia's cases, Victoria's cases of, you know, 70, 80, really don't seem like a lot. But going from zero to that, that's a massive concern because this bug um, is nasty. It, it replicate, replicates very quickly. It spreads very quickly from one person to the other. So you don't even know, 40% of people don't even know they're infected with it. They don't even have symptoms when they are, are infected. So it's really so we, important. We, yeah. First, uh, first, wanna, first, yeah, sorry. No, no, it's a related point. I, I want to ask you, were you surprised that there were a number of people going through the hotel quarantining system who were declining to be tested and then released having not been tested? I, I was surprised that anybody would be let into quarantine without being tested because I would have thought that, that if you're going to be quarantined, that's part of the requirement to, to see what your status is so that... Um, uh, you, you can have a decent steer about how long you're going to be in that situation. So I, I would have thought that there would have been quarantine as part of your, uh, sorry, test as part of your quarantine. Mm. Um, and then, of course, we've had breaches of, of uh, infection control around the hotels themselves, and that's caused its own problems. Um, I think that, you know, it's, it's important to have the hotels. It's important to make sure people are uh, looked after in the hotels and they are quarantined. But I would have thought testing should be part of that. Um, I, you know, I don't think... People should not be fearful of it. It seems to be that they're feared, fearing getting tested. I don't know what there is to fear. You know, if you're negative, you're negative, hooray. If you're mm. not negative, well, you stay in quarantine, you can become positive again. That's what, so, that's so, what you're doing anyway. So I, I'm interested in the fact that it's Victoria that's had this outbreak, given Victoria had some of the toughest lockdown restrictions of the entire country. They were much slower than other states to start to ease those restrictions. What else could be the reason? Well, I mean, I, th I think that uh, the, the issue we, we have is the messaging has been um, uh, very difficult to interpret sometimes. So uh, at the very beginning, we had different governments saying different things. We had different departments and the same government saying different things. National Cabinet, you know, made it a whole lot more uh, wholesome, if you like. Uh, and then there's different restrictions state to state. And some people are putting down uh, the, the barriers. Some people aren't. And I think that that's the confusion in people's minds. We have a, a outside the front of our building, which is, um, has many practices of different sorts of practitioners that we're keeping safe by um, having people on the front with a security guard, um, making sure people are screened before they come in. Um, first of all, people will say to us, hey, what are you guys doing here? This is all over. You know, that's the message they've got, which is completely, you know, miles from the truth. Then yeah. they don't give us a fair, a fair, fair income truth when they're coming in. So you, you, you're, you're expecting them to give you a, a, you know, a decent understanding of what's going on and listening to the questions you're asking them and answering truthfully. And when they come in, we're finding people who have actually got these conditions and then we've got to move them out and say, look, we're going to look after you, but we can't look after you in here that we're trying to keep safe. We'll, we'll look after you in our respiratory clinic outside the back or we'll get you to hospital or we'll do something in the phone by phone or in the car. But people are um, 
when they're not honest. We can't look after them properly, and they put everybody else at risk. So to me, it's the uh, keeping the community safe. It's certainly selfish. Keep, me, keep yourself safe. Keep your family safe. But by doing that, you're keeping everybody else safe. So your message you gave very clearly, quite rightly, is about hand hygiene, about distancing, um, about making sure you get tested so that you know where you are if you've got symptoms. And for goodness sake, don't soldier on. Don't go to work if you're ill. Couldn't be any clearer than that, Makesh. And I know you've been on the absolute coalface in Melbourne's western suburbs from the get-go on this with your COVID testing clinic. So thank you very much for that advice tonight. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Good evening.